And one of your very uh, popular posts was around risk-adjusted value and FOFU, I think you call it. Fofu, <laughs> there's a new, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> there's a new uh, four-letter acronym that sounds like TOFU. Can you explain what risk-adjusted value is? Because it's kind of like conducive to what we're talking about right now. Um, imagine you're one of these buying committees and you're looking at four different products. And each product has a value proposition. But you're actually looking at a five-way decision, not a four-way decision, because everyone is competing against the status quo. And, and again, if we go back and we look at the Gardner data, you know, what we see is that in more than half of cases, the status quo wins. But generally, the status quo is going to have the lowest amount of, of positive value, of sort of declared value. But what people are not seeing is sort of what's below the waterline. And what's below the waterline is negative value associated with risk. Because again, all risk is, you know, is a dollar value with a minus sign in front. And one of the things that will also happen is that there will be a tendency to undervalue potential positive, the potential upside, and to overvalue the potential risk. And again, this is a, a normal human bias. So you don't necessarily have real value and real risk, you have perceived value. It's like loss but aversion. So it's not about like, hey, what I can get positively for the business and myself out of this decision. It's about limiting any downside risk and just going with right. a sort of satisfactory product that sort of half ticks the boxes. Is this what people get wrong? Like very smart people, very technically minded people? Because I know in, in tech, like sometimes you've got founders who are very technically smart, computer science engineers, um, but they're very, I would say dumb when it comes to business smarts. The lowest risk option will always be the status quo even if it's also the lowest value option. So risk adjusted value is essentially the perceived value that that choice is going to bring minus the perceived cost of the risk associated with it. And that risk is basically, is this thing going to blow up on me? The problem is, is that most of the things that will cause a buying decision to blow up, the people making that decision have no control over. You come in, you make that decision, you move on, and then some implementation team that you have no control over screws it up. And when that happens, no one says these low level implementation people messed it up. They say it was a bad buying decision. And even if you're completely gone, they will come and drag you back and, and attach really? the blame to you. What? It, it, it is very career damaging inside a large organization. The famous saying that goes back probably 40 years almost, is no one ever got fired for buying IBM. And that's where that comes from. Your career for the rest of your tenure in this company is just going to go nowhere. Your, your next assignment is going to be the junior assistant country manager for Gabon or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 